And joining me now are boys in the band cast members, Zachary Quinto, Robin De Jesus, and Charlie Carver. Hey, so good to see you today. Thank you for joining us live. So, you know, I gotta tell you, looking at the video, first of all, the tie, the size of the ties make me know that year is in the 60s. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the conversation, Zachary, that we're having from 68 to when you reprise these roles now, what strikes you as the biggest change? I know we have huge legislative changes, but in our conversations yeah. that we have with each other. Well, I think a huge testament to how far we've come is the fact that the entire cast of this film is, um, you know, we're all openly gay, successful, thriving, integrated, uh, men and when you consider how challenging it was for the guys who originated these roles to consider what they were sacrificing to um, to take the risk to be a part of this project, I think uh, I think that in and of itself is a huge leap forward um, and one that's really encouraging and one that I think it's incumbent upon all of us to continue. Uh, moving in that direction. Absolutely. And Robin, I read something where you said there's a 10th character that we don't see on screen. What is that 10th? Who is that 10th character? Yeah, I think in the past, this story was always made to feel as like a little less than because people felt it was about a bunch of gay men who were self-loathing or, or self-hating. And I think that perspective it came from not clocking that 10th person, which was society and the society that oppressed these gay men and made them feel like they were less than and, and, and shamed them ultimately. And so oftentimes what you see in the movie is not self-hatred so much as just young gay men trying to survive and sustain in a world that is not for them. Yeah, yeah and it's interesting because Charlie, your character Cowboy is one of the only characters who actually accepts himself in the way that the others don't, picking up on what Robin said. You know, I, I always though think again of the time that has passed. I mean, it's 1968. I don't know how old you are, but I was just about to be born then. And when I look at, you know, women's rights, civil rights, all of these things, in some ways it feels like an eternity ago, and then in others it feels like this just happened overnight. So don't be surprised that the struggle is still so hard because it's not that long ago. Yeah, there's a there's a big difference between these legislative changes that we've seen, e even in my lifetime. I mean, I've seen uh, the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, marriage equality passed federally, um, and that represents judicial changes. But then there's also changes in terms of lived acceptance. And I think that's true for any kind of minority community of, yeah, we, we may have a uh, quality according to the state, but when will we be seen as equals and afforded the same respect and dignity and affirmation by our communities and our country at large? What was it like, as I told you, we love fashion around here, we love talking, the, the 1968 through 75 fashion, I believe, the best era of fashion. What was it like on set for y'all? It was no joke. Lou Eirich, who was the amazing costume designer uh, for the film, um, really allowed us to collaborate in such an exciting way. When I showed up for my first costume fitting, she just unfurled these bolts of jewel-toned velvet and, uh, <laughs> and, and sort of asked what I thought we should go with. We settled on emerald green, which was, uh, I think, probably the boldest choice we could have made. But it was so fun to, uh, to build that part of our characters and to immerse ourselves in how they decide to present themselves in the world. Well, and that's a big part of it, how you present yourself. And and what and that is a part of the, the debate over a standing out, assimilation, how people view you. Because obviously, if you're a gay man, no one knows that unless you talk about it, tell it. And sometimes we tell who we are through how we present ourselves in our clothing. And, and that's a big, big part of it. I'm curious, though, with streaming now it being a great outlet to keep Broadway alive and these shows alive. Robin, has that been just a, a relief for you to know that something like this does not get a, stay on the shelf? People can come out and see it right in their homes. Yeah, it's hard because we're such a fan of just sharing space together in the theater community. It's all about that that feeling of community and 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 sharing this experience together of watching really great stories. And so now it, it hurts to not have that option. Yeah. But luckily, there's really great ingenuitive folks who are figuring out how to tape new shows. There's, there's stuff that was archived for years that now is made available. You saw uh, Disney Plus had Hamilton, yeah. which was amazing. 
Um, but I'm excited to see what's coming next because yeah. now there's a there are people discussing actually filming shows during this quarantine time. Which would be phenomenal to see. I mean, can you imagine? But it gives this stream. But Charlie, going back to the essence of of this show, this movie, and what you bring. I mean, we're all spending a lot more time in the home. You're going to have young kids who are 15, 16 years old, and they may sit down and see this, and it changed their lives as it changed each of yours. What does that feel like for you? I mean, it's pretty incredible to think this is uh, kind of to Robin's point, you know, it's a democratization of, of what we were able to do in New York. And it's not only all over the country now, it's all over the world. Uh, to just see, I think, the joy of these characters and then through that be introduced mm -hmm. to some of their pain. Like, it's it's really moving as a as an artist to know that you're reaching as wide of an yeah. audience as possible, especially with something that feels meaningful. Absolutely. I've got to ask before I go, Zachary, who was the most fun on set? Um, Andrew Reynolds is a is life of a party. <laughs> I love True these that. two, but, you know, they would agree. True I that. Tell that. Tell them the short. Oh, yeah, I agree. Well, congratulations on this. Thank you for bringing the joy. And most important, thank you for bringing the inspiration with your work. It, it means a lot to have you all on. Take care.